It's UB Football Insider as the Bulls wrap up their home schedule later today against the Miami Red Hawks. Coach joins us to tell us how the Red Hawks are suddenly resurgent. We'll introduce you to linebacker and electrical engineering major Jarrett Franklin. He provides a spark to the defense and he can tell you how that spark works. Plus, we'll go behind the brand here at UB. It's all on this week's edition of UB Football Insider. Starts to the left, cuts up field, still going. All aboard the J train. The next stop is the end zone. Hangs the ball up deep. Mason Trek got it. 40, 50, bounce it off a tackle. 20, still going. Oh. It's an amazing touchdown catch of 75 yards. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to UB Football Insider as we welcome in Bulls head coach Lance Leipold to not just talk about today's game against Miami, but because we got the basketball season started for a few weeks, we haven't had a chance to catch up with you on the last couple of games. And in particular, Lance, let's start by talking about the big win over Akron a couple of weeks ago, and even more specifically, Jordan Johnson's outstanding school record performance of 282 yards rushing. It was a lot of fun to watch. It was uh, getting Jordan going and really getting him looking like the player that we've seen in the past from your perspective on the sideline and in the film room can you assess what that game was like well it was a good win for the program and, and as you alluded to a great a great night for Jordan Johnson he's worked extremely hard as you said we haven't had all those uh kind of moments for him as we had hoped uh, in his senior season. He's kept working hard, and uh, it was great to get him on track. And it's really our, our probably our most complete performance of the year. Yeah, and it was interesting. There was a, a lot of coaching that was involved in the formations that you used to get Jordan going. There was certainly a lot of execution by the offensive line, uh, by a lot of things on offense that worked for Jordan. How satisfying is that for you and your coaching staff to see a lot of those things that you slave over all week long finally come to fruition? Well, it, it, was a, it, it means a lot because we've seen the potential it's just that unfortunately we haven't put enough of that together this season and, and to see it on a night like that on a home game against a team that uh, was, you know was a bold team last year ahead of us right now in the in the division it, it was a great night that way uh, it also you could see when, when you get Jordan going it helped Tyree in the run game and then our pass game opened up as well and um, we're still trying to get that on a uh, on a consistent basis yeah well speaking of Tyree uh, in the loss to Ohio last week he goes over 300 yards yards 302 yards his second 300 yard passing game of the year he's the first UB freshman quarterback to throw for 300 yards in a game is it another sign of the continuing development for Tyree when the stats kind of reflect that I think so we're you know we, we've been you know really trying to create more explosive plays we were able to get one in that game with Mason Shrek we, we thought we had a couple other opportunities I think Malcolm Robinson had a big play and I think when you when you have someone with Tyree's athleticism his strong arm um um, you know, those are hopefully great signs for the future that we can build upon that. All right, another test for Tyree. The offense in both sides of the ball comes later today, a 1 o'clock kickoff against a suddenly resurgent Miami Redhawks team that UB has defeated four years in a row. But all of a sudden, after an 0-6 start, the Redhawks have won four games in a row. What are you seeing that has triggered the turnaround in their season? Well, they've made a they made a change at quarterback. They bat a lot of injuries early in the year. They're starting to get some players healthy, and and it's a credit to Chuck Martin and his staff. And, you know, it's a program that has won five of their first thirty games as a coaching staff, and they've stuck to their plan. They've they, they've kept playing with younger players, recruiting well. They've made great facility uh, uh, additions to their program, and you're talking about a program that probably has as much history, if not the most, in the MAC. And they've used all those things to their credit, and now 
now their players are playing with a lot of confidence. Um, they come in with the number one ranked defense in the MAC. I believe they're number two in stopping the run. They lead the MAC in interceptions. So uh, you know, again, we talk about Tyree, we talk about Jordan. Here they're going to get another good test, much like they did in Ohio last week against a defense that's playing well. What is it about Miami's defense that they do so well? Very aggressive, but fundamentally sound in what they're doing. I, I think even from a year ago, what impressed me is how hard they played, and uh, and that's again a, a, a tribute to their coaching staff. And they see something, they trigger, they get downhill, they make it, they get a lot of people around the ball, and it's a young team that's hungry. Uh, on offense, Miami is resurgence that we talked about has been triggered a lot by the new quarterback that you mentioned. Gus Ragland is a quarterback that Bulls fans have not seen. He did not play against UB last year. Um, coming off a knee injury in the offseason, all of a sudden kind of bursts on the scene. Is he a runner? Is he a thrower? What is he doing well? Uh, a pretty gritty performer is what he, he's been able to do both. His accuracy in the passing game has been very impressive. He, he's a pretty thick guy as well that can run the ball and the quarterback runs game whether it be naked boots if it's in the quarterback you know running read game that so many of us are doing and uh, the thing he's done is he's managed the game really well for them as well he hasn't thrown an interception he keeps the sticks moving and uh, again especially on that side of the ball that that uh, offense has really rallied around him well I, I know the simple answer to the question is going to be to win but what else do you want to see as this season comes to its conclusion with three more games left are there certain parts of progress that you want to make sure that you see as a uh, momentum boost into the offseason yeah I think so I, I think uh, again for any returning player you want to see progression in their play as individuals uh, they're learning from their mistakes not not making the same mistake repetitively that experience sometimes can can really help you overtake uh, you know we want our seniors to go out in their last home game appropriately and and find a way to get a win for them they've worked so hard for our program but I think in a general scheme I want to see us be better in ball security not giving up the big play not doing the self-inflicted wounds of, of turning the ball over and if we can build on those things because the flashes of the drives the flashes of the defensive stops that have been there if we can do that I think our program is going to head in the right direction these last three games all right those are some things to look for through the last three games and Lance mentioned it it will be senior day here later today at UB as the Bulls uh, bid farewell at least in front of the home crowd to the 18 seniors who are part of this year's UB team when we come back on UB Football Insider we will dive deeper into one of the most interesting stories on the Bulls team that would be linebacker Jarrett Franklin we'll talk more about him when we return to UB Football Insider Support the new Football Excellence Fund and help build a strong foundation for years to come. Go above and beyond by investing in the future of UB football today. Log on to BullsBlueAndWhite.com for more information and a list of Football Excellence Fund benefits. This segment of UB Football Insider with Lance Leipold is brought to you by CefQ. For all your banking, insurance, and investment needs, visit your local branch or go to cefq.com. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. My name is Paul Peck. It's time for our CefQ player profile, and today the focus is on junior linebacker Jarrett Franklin. He is fourth on the team in tackles, and after missing all of last year, his 17 tackle performance against Army told all of us that he was all the way back. He is as good a football player as he is a student. Jared Franklin, UB football, junior, outside linebacker. I was an electrical engineering major mainly because as a kid, I always wanted to take things apart and put them back together. Most of the time they didn't work when I put them back together, but it was just fascinating to see how if I took a picture on a, on a camera, it turned into something that you can hold forever. It, it took that instant and turned into something physical. And it's just, my mind was always boggled by things like that. And I just knew that's something I wanted to do because a lot of people didn't expect an engineer to be coming out of a, a country school like that. So. I'm, ex I'm excited to prove a lot of people wrong, and I'm at a D1 college chasing my dreams. It's a swing pass. It's caught by Hanks, the running back. He shakes one tackle and then gets buried at the 20 after a one-yard gain by Jared Franklin. Coming off of injury, again, being able to have him at, uh, to our use last year, but decided to redshirt him and great, uh, you know, based on the injury and now have him for another year. So he's, he's uh, doing a great job. That guy plays hard. He plays physical. Anything that he might lack, any mistakes he makes, he makes up for in hustle. 
It's been really tough, uh, you know, overcoming this adversity. I had two slip discs in my back right on top of each other, and I tried rehab for a few months, wasn't working out. And so I had to go ahead with the surgery, and it was, it was tough waiting on the sideline, waiting for results, watching my teammates getting better. It was a really tough time for me and trying to balance out classes. I actually had a final about a week after my surgery, and I had to stand up for three hours taking the final. It was, it was ridiculous, but I'm here, I'm playing, I'm healthy and I'm back out there with my teammates. It was weird seeing the game from the outside looking in and you know, it was a lot of good things that I learned from it. Like I could help with like some coaching points that you wouldn't be able to see while you're in the game and it just really helped me become more of a well-rounded football player. Under center is Tolls, draw play handoff, goes to Hillam and the running back, pinned in the backfield, tries to shake it off and then gets engulfed by a host of Bulls for another tackle for loss. Jarrett Franklin is there along with Max Parisi and a bunch of other Bulls. The linebacker group this year is special, I can tell you that, because everyone is hungry, everyone has some sort of experience at linebacker, and the biggest motto we have right now is we're headhunters, we're savages, we're trying to go out there and hit somebody. We're just really excited for the opportunity to be able to play together on the field. So can I assume that uh, on your downtime, you and Jared Franklin are hanging out talking about electrical engineering? I don't know if that happens a whole lot, Paul. <laughs> I think when he comes in, we all feel a little intimidated. But uh, what a quality young man. You know, he's handled football, his academics with, with great success in both areas. And uh, we're excited that uh, we have another year with Jared Franklin. He, he Is he, I assume he is a real inspiration to the guys on your team, not only for what he does on the football field, but what he handles off of it as well, too. Yeah, and he's, you know, he's very mature, very businesslike and how he goes through things and I think after missing last season I think he's also a young man who appreciates the opportunity that he has to, to be back on the field and playing college football. He talked in the story about what he learned from being out last season how he used that to his value of figuring out why things worked and getting a different perspective is that something you can pass along to redshirt freshmen and some of the other guys who for whatever reason maybe aren't on the field as much as they want to be? Absolutely and I think in some of those conversations with Jared that I had at the time we were trying to decide if we were going to redshirt him or try to play him the last half of the season is what he told told me in in my office about how excited he was about what what our young players were bringing to the program and he really wanted to be part of the future beyond Jared Franklin the linebacking core has been very solid this year and Khalil Hodge you have the second leading tackler in the Mac Ishmael Hargrove has made a number of big plays even freshman Matt Otwanowski was your leading tackler in the game against Ohio so give us an assessment of where the linebacking position is right now and where it's going well I think what you, you see is that they're all underclassmen and they're all making plays and they've all had a chance to, to have success and that's really going to help us as we as we head into the off season and and head into spring ball and, and build it towards the 17th season we still want those guys to improve but the best way to improve sometimes is with live snaps in the game and be able to see all the different looks and when you really see what we've gone through um and, and what our defense has had to prepare against, whether it be Army, whether it be Kent, whether, you know, and then, then most of the other offenses are very similar. They've had to go through a lot of different things, a lot of different reads and discipline, and, and I think it's uh, definitely going to pay off. Uh, Otwanowski, as I mentioned, had a, an outstanding game against Ohio, one of the few true freshmen that's played this year for you. What is it that, about Matt's play that said, we, we got to get this kid on the field? If there was somebody that's come into our program probably since we've been here, I think Cam Lewis was maybe another one one of those young men that a year ago but it became very apparent in the first few days of fall camp that this young man could grasp the defense be a leader and had the fundamental uh, base that that he was going to be able to help our football team and he's done that all right so Lance's Bulls uh, home finale comes up later today it's a one o'clock kickoff against the Miami Red Hawks the uh, fun gets started with nerds gone wild on Stampede Square's concert stage that begins at 11 a.m. so your last chance to get to see the Bulls 2016 version comes up later on today. Lance, good luck today. Thank you very much. Lance Leipold is the Bulls head football coach. When we return on UB Football Insider, we go behind the brand and tell you all about the branding initiative here at the University of Buffalo. That's next. 
Buffalo sports fans. The UB men's basketball team returns to Alumni Arena on Thursday, November 17th when they host Nazareth. It's UB Campus Living Toys for Tots Night, and fans are encouraged to bring a new unwrapped toy to the game. For every toy turned in, receive a voucher for a $10 ticket to a future game. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. For tickets and more information, visit ubbulls.com or call 1-877-UB-THERE. Well, I am joined by University at Buffalo Vice President of Communications, Nancy Payton. And Nancy, one of the reasons we wanted to have you on is Bulls fans have noticed the new look all over campus for the last couple of months. And everybody around here says you are the person behind all of it. So I want you to give everybody a little insider's view of the whole initiative and the branding that went along across campus, not just athletics, but across campus in the last couple of right. years. Well, thanks for the opportunity, Paul. So good sure. to see you. Good to spend time together. Um, first of all, I want to say it's this is a university-wide initiative. And so I've had, this has been a labor of love. Um, and that has involved faculty, staff, students, um, administration from all over the university, especially athletics. You know, we've had a really terrific partnership with athletics as we look to celebrate who the University of Buffalo is, what we do, and why it matters. Yeah, that, that also tells me you probably had a lot of opinions to sort through when you were figuring all this out as well, too. We did. You know, we had about 8,000 people give us their opinion. No kidding. We had um, a considerable uh, marker research because we really wanted to delve in to, to learn what the community felt about the university. What are the the university attributes? What is the personality of the university? What are opportunities to really tell the story of the, this fantastic university, its research prowess, its national um, and international impact, and of course the impact uh, that athletics is making here. And as, as we all know, this is a very aspirational and exciting time for sure. UB Athletics. And what greater time for us to be able to celebrate that then um, to, to create um, a new spirit mark and really to bring that sense of pride, that sense of Buffalo uniqueness back into UB Athletics. Well, you mentioned the Buffalo, and I know a lot of Bulls fans were happy to see that the Buffalo became much more prominent. Was that a goal of yours throughout this whole process to, to make Buffalo a little more front and center, not just athletically, but university-wide? It really emerged from the research, Paul. I mean, honestly, I mean, it was an overarching theme. When we talked to those 8,000 people, they were, there's such a pride and, and, and there's such a spirit here in Buffalo. Um, of course, the university's name has Buffalo in it. But as we asked people, we learned so much about the uniqueness of this university, its tenacity, its spirit, its aspiration, its ambition, and all of those things showed us time and time again that this is what this university is about but it's also what buffalo is about and it was we felt the opportunity to really celebrate that connection between the university and the community all right so all the changes have been implemented everybody has seen them all over campus yes. uh, for about six months or so now yes. so uh once you come up with these ideas and you launch them there's a, is there a little bit of sitting back and going i hope everybody likes this <laughs> stuff which i think they have what's been the reaction the reaction has been fantastic um i see more and more students wearing the new spirit mark, the new buffalo, with the buffalo name on it. I just, I was just coming over today, and I counted no less than 15 students with sweatshirts and t-shirts on today with the new mark. So that is, while it's not scientific, it tells me that pride is increasing. Um, I have heard, I've talked to alums from all over the, the country, and they are so excited and so energized by the fact that the university is telling its story more broadly. We're telling it nationally, but they also love the celebration of buffalo and how we have celebrated our place of pride in our community throughout, whether it's athletics or all of our academic or administrative units. Um, we're hearing prospective students. Um, as of today, I was at a meeting this morning, our interest from prospective students is 22% above this time last year. So we're starting to get noticed and quite right too. Right. Director of Athletics Alan Green talks a lot about athletics being sort of the front door to a university. And in a lot of ways, the spirit mark, the logos, um, because they're on television and because they appear on the football field and the basketball field, really are the first chance for a lot of people to get a feel for it. So how big a role does athletics play in sort of leading the way for all of this across campus? I couldn't agree with Alan Moore. To me, this is 
FLX is somewhat of our front porch. It's the first time people will ever, many people, as you just said, Paul, will have exposure to what the university is and who we are. And so we have had a great partnership with athletics, and we're working really closely together in how do we take athletics as in, and think about the opportunity, both on the field and off the field, to tell the university's story. And so if for those people who are coming to our campus, they're going to see how we have celebrated um, the new brand and the new spirit mark all over our campus. So we've worked together on that. If you come to a UB football game, which I hope everybody is coming to UB football Absolutely. games, um, you'll see how the stadium, you'll see the changes in the stadium when it comes to some of our signage and our marks, our uniforms. Uh, it gives this fantastic initial impression. And as we're seeing, people are through social media and through our website, they're wanting to learn more. And we're seeing our engagement levels on those platforms rise. And I know athletics is as well. So all right, great. All U good news. UB Vice President of Communications, Nancy Payton, with the latest on the branding efforts here. Nancy, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Paul. And please, I want to encourage the community, please come on out and support your, your UB Bulls. It's going to be a great basketball season ahead. Our men's soccer team is on their way to great success. Swimming, women swimming, please, please come out and support. Purpose. Here, it's not just what we do, it's how we do it. Buffalo sports fans, the UB men's basketball team returns to Alumni Arena on Thursday, November 17th when they host Nazareth. It's UB Campus Living Toys for Tots Night, and fans are encouraged to bring a new unwrapped toy to the game. For every toy turned in, receive a voucher for a $10 ticket to a future game. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. For tickets and more information, visit ubbulls.com or call 1-877-UB-THERE. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. It's time to take a look at our Karuba collisions from last week's game against Ohio. Here are this week's Karuba collisions. Long count, blitz look by the Bulls. Maxwell back in the pocket deep. He is rushed, hit, and sacked. Brought down by Damone Harris with help from Jordan Collier. Third sack of the year for Damone Harris, and the blitz call work. This is a handoff to Malik Irons, the running back, and he is dragged down by Corey Henderson in on defense for the Bulls, and that's going to be a one-yard loss back to the 41. With great effort and speed, gets over there and brings it down before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Shotgun snap. Maxwell throws to the left, swings it out, caught by Malik Irons. He is run into by Cameron Lewis and driven backwards. I think that may go as another one-yard loss. It does. Go to ubbulls.com now to vote for your favorite Karuba Collision of the Week. Well, thanks for watching this week's edition of UB Football Insider. Remember, later today, it's the home finale for the Bulls. One o'clock kickoff against the Miami Red Hawks. Get here early because Nerds Gone Wild takes the concert stage in Stampede Square at 11 a.m. And don't forget, there's basketball this week. The UB women's team takes on crosstown rival Niagara. That's Wednesday night. And the men take on Nazareth. Thursday here at Alumni Arena. Both games tip off at 7 o'clock. Hope to see you here. See you next week right here on UB Football Insider.